you are willing and ready to embark upon the remainder of life's journey together, will you please indicate this desire by turning and facing one another and joining your hands? You have spoken to each other and to me and to God of your love. Love is a beautiful thing and will become a growing, enduring blessing if you cultivate it and make it the foundation of your marriage. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous. Love does not brag, and it is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, it is not easily angry, it does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. How in case we've talked about the meaning of that word love. That it's not a feeling, that it's a conscious decision to value another person. And so the challenge for the two as we move forward is going to be how do I do that? How do I communicate my value for my spouse each and every day? How uh, scripture instructs us to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And of course, that kind of love is a sacrificial love. And so you're going to have to find ways to sacrifice. Uh, some of the things you said earlier, Jack, if you got the idea. Okay. And Tracy, Scripture instructs uh, wives to respect or honor their husbands. Well, there's probably many times where he doesn't earn it or deserve it. But you know what? Just to see is to unconditionally love you, you need to unconditionally show honor and respect. And so you'll find ways, try to find ways to communicate that love each and every day. How my challenge you is to keep your arms closed, keep your guessing every day. Okay? The love that you now feel will grow stronger through the years if you give yourselves to its nurturing care. This must have the attention and commitment of both husband and wife. Now at this time, Kyle and Tracy have agreed to exchange vows, but rather than standard vows, uh, they've written their own vows. So at this time, uh, they will share their vows with one another. How would you give as a symbol of your love for Tracy? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> 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 this is why we have friends here. The way you read is a beautiful symbol of a great and wonderful reality. The picture is a long map to be broken or tarnished or denied. When you accept it, you are identified as belonging to another in a sacred relationship. Kyle, I would ask you to place the ring on your bride's ring finger and hold it in place as you repeat after me. I give you this ring as a token of my love for you and as a symbol of our marriage union. Please wear it as a reminder 
of the promises and the love we now share. It says, I love you. That's my very own. You can see what they did with some of their love for God. Place it on his own finger. And hold it in place as you agree after me. I give you this ring. As a token of my love for you. And as a symbol of our marriage union. Please wear it as a reminder of the promises and the love we now share. It says, I love you. That's my very own. Because Kyle and Tracy have consented to become one in Christian marriage, I now pronounce them husband and wife, so long as they both shall live. When God is joined together, let no man separate. I think we have to wait for the <laughs> Now you might kiss your body. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Kyle Fliss. Thank you. 